You may have heard of something called the metaverse in recent months. Perhaps you've heard that the metaverse will eventually replace the Internet. Maybe we're all meant to live there. Perhaps Facebook or Epic or Roblox or a slew of smaller firms is attempting to take control. And perhaps it has nothing to do with NFTs. Hey everyone, welcome to Martin's Vids. In today's video, we're going to talk about metaverse. So without further ado, let's dig right into it. What exactly is metaverse? That's an interesting question. Metaverse is now a big term in the realms of technology, business, and finance, and its meaning, like all buzzwords, is hazy, debated, and molded by the objectives of those who use it. Here's one thing we can be certain of. Neil Stevenson developed the phrase in his 1992 novel, Snow Crash, to describe a virtual environment and widespread usage in his envisioned future, a 21st century dystopia. The metaverse is a virtual reality universe presented in Snow Crash as a planet-encircling market where virtual real estate can be purchased and sold, and where VR goggle-wearing users inhabit 3D avatars of their own design. These three aspects, a VR interface, digital ownership, and avatars are still significant in modern metaverse concepts. However, none of these are necessary to the concept. In basic terms, the metaverse is defined as an aesthetically rich virtual arena with some degree of realism in which people may work, play, shop, socialize, in short, perform the things that humans prefer to do together in real life, or perhaps more to the point, on the internet. Proponents of the metaverse frequently emphasize the notion of presence as a distinguishing factor, feeling like you're really there, and that other people are also truly there with you. In the guise of video games, this version of the metaverse may already exist. However, there is another meaning of the metaverse that goes beyond the virtual worlds we are familiar with. This description does not define the metaverse in any way, but it does explain why everyone believes it is so essential. This term isn't about a future vision or a new technology. Rather, it looks to the past and to now commonplace technology such as the internet and cell phones and posits that, in order to replace them, the metaverse must be invented. The metaverse is described as a type of successor state to the mobile internet by famous venture capitalist Matthew Ball, who has written extensively about it. Mark Zuckerberg, who named his business Facebook Meta, and stated that the metaverse will be its emphasis last year, used an almost identical term. Clearly, Ball's articles have had a tremendous influence on Silicon Valley thinking. Remember how cell phones transform technology, the economy, and society? The metaverse is predicted to be a similar watershed, and many firms are racing to be ahead of it. Many aspects of Ball's vision are debatable, but the most significant is his claim that the metaverse would be a single network as open, linked, and interoperable as the Internet is now. That's a lot to ask, but let's not go too far ahead of ourselves. Why is everyone suddenly talking about the metaverse? A few causes have propelled it to the forefront of the IT industry's thinking in recent years. One is that a few of technologies strongly related with metaverse visions have evolved. Virtual reality, which was still in its early stages when Stevenson penned Snow Crash in the 1990s, is now, well, a reality. Commercially available high-quality headphones, including independent wireless devices like the Quest, are available. Facebook's acquisition of Oculus in 2014 was an early indicator of Zuckerberg's vision for his company. Another is the blockchain, the incomprehensible and energy-intensive technology that has enabled cryptocurrencies and NFTs. Over the last year or two, NFTs have become an obsession for crypto enthusiasts, snake oil marketers, suggestible CEOs, and, surprisingly, some elements of the art world. They might permit ownership of virtual things and real estate within the metaverse. It should be emphasized that it is possible to possess and even sell virtual things in a variety of games and virtual places, including Second Life, without the use of the blockchain. But such ownership is fragile and generally subject to a licensing agreement. NFTs provide various, but similarly poor, methods of demonstrating ownership. Regardless, proponents of the metaverse are thrilled about NFT's novelty and alleged mobility. 
The coronavirus epidemic, which has profoundly transformed lifestyles throughout the world, is also a crucial contributor in the metaverse movement. With individuals spending so much time in Zoom meetings for business, and people want to join more colorful and interesting settings without leaving the security and safety of their homes, it's natural for tech firms to explore for methods to benefit on the situation by connecting these two requirements. Late in 2021, Facebook's redesign and mission statement focusing on the metaverse clinched the deal. Since then, the word has become increasingly common, at least in the corporate sphere. The worlds of government and politics may take a time to catch up as they focus on how to control big tech's dominance in the here and now, as well as how to offset the negative impacts of social media on actual society, which is still a thing. Isn't the metaverse just video games? Maybe. You know who believes this. Microsoft. In response to Microsoft's acquisition of Activision Blizzard for nearly $70 billion, Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella stated, When we think about our vision for what a metaverse can be, we believe there won't be a single centralized metaverse and there shouldn't be. We need to support many metaverse platforms. In gaming, we see the metaverse as a collection of communities and individual identities anchored in strong content franchises, accessible on every device. It's conceivable that Nadella was simply throwing the term of the day at shareholders in the hopes that it would help rally support for such massive acquisition. Nonetheless, he was sketching a picture that was markedly distinct from Ball and Zuckerberg's all-encompassing VR Internet. In this interpretation, metaverses are multiple and exist all around us. They are long-lasting communities built around virtual worlds where people wish to be, such as World of Warcraft or Call of Duty, Warzone. Microsoft's viewpoint is consistent here. Around the same time that Facebook acquired Oculus, Microsoft purchased Mojang and its massively popular game, Minecraft. Minecraft, with its social, creative, and deeply customizable gameplay, is frequently cited as a metaverse-adjacent game. And it's worth noting that Microsoft has not attempted to coerce it into exclusivity on its own platforms. Instead, it sees Minecraft as a valuable platform in its own right. MMOs, such as World of Warcraft, have a clear kinship in form, if not function, with metaverses. However, there are closer analogs in two post-Minecraft games that are immensely popular with kids. In both Roblox and Fortnite, your avatar, presence, customization options, and social connections are almost as important as the game itself. Or, in Roblox cases, the games. Roblox is an incredibly free form environment, similar to Second Life, where players author their own games and chase status and dreams of real-world success, and where brands create advert games to reach the exclusive tween demographic. Meanwhile, Fortnite has hosted massive in-game cultural events, such as the 2020 Travis Scott concert, which drew over 27 million participants. Many observers, including Ball, believe that these experiences are the closest thing to a real metaverse experience. Should you consider re-signing to living in the metaverse? No, not yet. Despite the idea's maturity and the current infatuation with it in boardrooms, the technology still needs a lot of development, especially if it is truly to become the future Internet, as Ball and Zuckerberg anticipate. And... Despite the epidemic that has imprisoned so many of us to our homes, there is still a huge consumer desire for a metaverse experience that isn't simply a video game. Interoperability is the most significant barrier to Ball and Zuckerberg's metaverse becoming a reality. You might call it standardization. The idea is that you will be able to transfer your avatar and digital belongings from one app, game, or virtual environment to the next. Ball imagines, for example, integrating a unique Counter-Strike gun skin into Fortnite. Interoperability is crucial for the metaverse to evolve into the next stage of the Internet's growth, yet the obstacles appear insurmountable. There are technical obstacles, such as how to move an object from one graphics engine to another and render it accurately across a dizzying array of hardware combinations. There are also legal and financial hurdles, such as evading intellectual property rights, and convincing a plethora of businesses not to wall off their gardens. It's a lot more difficult than, say, settling on a standard for hypertext links. 
people must also be persuaded that this is something they desire. The technology we use to access these worlds must be at least as easy and convenient to use as a smartphone, as well as portable, or it will appear to be a step backward from the mobile internet it is designed to replace. And, while the science fiction attractiveness of such a virtual environment may be evident on the surface, one has to wonder how deep the urge to spend time there truly goes. Metaverses are frequently depicted in fiction, ranging from Snow Crash to The Matrix and Ready Player One. As a willing or unwilling escape from dystopian realities, there are too horrible to bear. I dare hope that we're not quite there yet. What are your thoughts about the metaverse? Please let us know in the comments section down below. Hope you like this video. If so, then hit the like button. Also, subscribe to Ma 10's vids and hit the bell icon so you never miss any video. See you in the next video. Till then, take care. Thanks for watching.